But I mean, come on, like this looks incredible. So one of the really strikingly beautiful and pretty parts about this game is the vegetation. But as you can see, they're not really contributing to the lighting of the scene because they're not casting any shadows. So we're gonna go ahead and fix that. What's up guys, it's Sam here and welcome back to another episode of me drooling over graphics. I've been playing a lot of the Sons of the Forest recently and I've been having a blast. So I wanted to make a video though covering what I think makes the game look so good because it's very pretty. I want to basically review some gameplay footage all together with you guys and then open up Unity and dig deep into the technical aspects of what I think they could have done to achieve the results that they have achieved. And we're going to particularly focus on the vegetation, but if there's anything else you guys would like me to cover, please let me know in the comments and we can make a video out of that. So let's get started by reviewing some gameplay footage and the actual in-game content, and then we're going to open up Unity and get into the technical aspect. So let's go. Oh man, this looks pretty. This is really pretty. Oh hey, I'm playing with multiple Kelvins using a trainer mod that they released. It's really funny to see them all just like bringing me tons of logs. Oh, and I placed a bench, but I made it face towards the wall. So they're just like, it's like a quiet corner. <laughs> Are you sad? But I mean, come on, like this looks incredible. So one of the really strikingly beautiful and pretty parts about this game is the vegetation. It's really dense. I mean, not even speaking about the forest itself, grass and the plants, like these small bushes that you have all around to a point where all the shadows that they cast are are made very clear just by the density itself and then on top of that they have added effects such as ambient occlusion and I'm assuming subsurface scattering as well which are all part of the HDRP pipeline in Unity too. I think they also nailed just overall the coloring like right now you saw the sun go behind the clouds as you can see and then it just like throws this really nice darker shade on top of the vegetation. It doesn't go fully dark, which I think is one of the main things that many games miss. As soon as there's like cloud in front of the sun, they just make it completely dark. And then once you look just down here, like this bush right here, it's still shaded, you know, with very nice green saturation, although it's fully blocked by the shadows. Well, not fully, but you know, you can see this like sun strips just hitting every, every now and then. Speaking of the colors between the vegetation and everything else, it's like the contrast that you have on things such as rocks, which, you know, obviously given its material, it's way more shiny when the sun hits it. The contrast is just so beautifully made. Like it's not all over the place, even when you look a little bit into the distance, like across the river. It just looks aligned with the amount of light that the trees receive. Hi, Kelvin. <laughs> is it Kevin or Kelvin? I think it's Kelvin. I keep calling him Kevin. And then I read on Reddit that, you know, a lot of people are calling him like random names that just start with K. Like one of the people were like, I just call him Keith. <laughs> I was like, okay. One of the things that I want to experiment more with is, uh, and I actually want to make a video about this. So let me know if you guys would like this, but the, the waterfall effect, it's just so good. It looks so pretty no matter which perspective you look at it from, no matter the point of view, it's just so good. And this is what I meant with the density of the vegetation too. I think they're portraying it really nicely here. They just have a terrain texture, which I think is just regular pixel per pixel displacement that they're using. I may be wrong, I need to actually check this out. But then right next to it, you actually have the vegetation model, which looks great. And it's also nice that they're not using the same exact color because if they use it here, it would become very clear that it's faked out, so to speak, in order to save for performance. But right now it just looks, it looks pretty natural. It's clear that this is a texture, but it doesn't look off. Given that you're gonna be spending most of your time building and constructing with log for, you know, the cabins that you're gonna build or whatever else, like a base that you're gonna construct, I think they've really nailed the texturing and the model and the mesh quality of the wood, the level of distancing too. Like you look at it this close and it looks great, right? But then you look at it all the way from here, still looks pretty good. You can even see some like discoloring on some of the log pieces, which is nice because you have seasonal effects in the game, such as snow, like we mentioned before, but then also rain. So it gives you just the mental idea that the wood can get discolored over time just because of wear and tear, basically. Although one thing is clear that the shadows inside are not very strong from this perspective. I would like for it to be a little bit less exposure inside the house. Like from here, it looks bright, which is natural, but from all the way over there, I think it should look darker. I think the global illumination looks fine. It's not exactly the best in my opinion. Like I think it could be improved. I mean, 
the house has this like small leaks where light could easily come in but that would be more ambient light given that there is no sunlight hitting directly in here except for through that window here so i would assume the light to kind of bounce off of this right here and a little bit in the background as well but this still looks really good one thing that they nailed really really well which i think adds a lot to the visual fidelity of the game is when you cut down the trees this mechanic that like you see pieces of the tree just deconstructing over time with each hit it's so cool and then you actually see the light shine inside of this piece and like global illumination and ambient occlusion doing their job so it's it looks really nice i chose like the worst tree to do this on <laughs> there we go yeah this looks great yo where are you going i told you to chill 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 i'm so sorry you're bleeding uh, you're fine you're okay i'm so sorry kelvin i mean this game is not a walking simulator at all so don't get me wrong but it does make me miss walking simulators <laughs> like this looks incredible just take a look at this just walking through the forest it's so peaceful and it's so calming and this is what I mean by ambient occlusion. I mean, just take a look at the underneath of this vegetation. It looks so great. Oh my God, it's Virginia. <laughs> Hi, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm supposed to not approach her and she's approaching me. Calvin, Calvin, stay back. Oh my gosh, you ran right into her and she's backing off. No, she's, she's coming up. What the hell is wrong with you? What is that? And she's running off. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Oh my God. <laughs> Damn it, she ran off. Yo, squad. <laughs> I swear to God, these guys are so chill. It's crazy. Squad, get up. We're going. We're going to the snowy areas, all right? I didn't spawn you for nothing. If you're making a game in 2023 and you have snow, you definitely need some displacement for the snow too. I mean, the amount of just depth that it adds to your level is insane. And I think they did a pretty good job of implementing this here. Like ever since the release of Journey, the game on uh, PS3, way, way back actually, it's been a few years now. I think everybody has been trying to like figure out the perfect solution for snow and sand effects. And I think no game has so so far done it as good as journey but for a game an open world game this size i think snow like this looks really really nice so yeah as you can see our hotel is located at a beautiful part of the beach where we have this beautiful log cabin constructed by using natural materials we have a beautiful bench and accompanied by some dead bodies as well but don't mind them we also have a tent look at this tent it's such a i don't know what happened to the tent but it was so nice call now and make your reservations thanks kelvin <laughs> that was great i like how he just sits there like the landlord <laughs> just no care in the world he's like oh these goddamn renters oh my god <laughs> are you okay all right man all right listen landlord you enjoy the house, okay? I'm just gonna back off slowly. I think he enjoys killing people. It's pretty f***ed up. And one other thing. These waves that keep rolling into the, into the shorelines, it's so pretty. And you guys will probably recall these, actually. I think this is from KWS. Unless they made their own tool or solution and it looks really similar to this. But this is kind of the shoreline waves that I was using in my videos in the past. Whatever solution this is though, it's so pretty. And if you guys haven't checked it out yet, I would suggest you check out KWS Water Solution. This is basically what it gives you apart from the whole goddamn ocean system. That's like a bonus. Just for the shoreline waves that looks like this, I'd go for it. And you can see like the wetness just rolling in. And then the wetness of the sand just rolling out as, as the water goes away. And then right here you can see the dry sand as well. It's such a, it's such a beautiful transition between the two. Man, they really nailed the visuals of this game. Alright, so here we are in Unity and now we're going to take a look at this small demo that I created as promised before. This is sort of going to be a technical review. I've already set up like the reflection probes and the post-processing and stuff like that. But I have them disabled right now. So let's go through one in each and every one of them. 
I don't know what I just said. <laughs> Let's go through each one of them and enable them and also talk about why they're important. So I have one single directional light in the scene right now and I typically leave the post grading, post affecting to the very last bit so that I can get the raw results done first and then start grading on top of it based on my needs. So let's get started with the clouds in the sky. Basically what I have done is I'm using the Unity clouds, volumetric clouds by default, but as you can see, they're not really contributing to the lighting of the scene because they're not casting any shadows. So we're gonna go ahead and fix that. So we're gonna open up volumetric clouds, browse all the way down and enable shadows. Once we have the shadows from the clouds casting on, we're gonna go to our sun and you can see that we already have the shadow maps enabled, which casts very nice shadows inside of the building and also on the plants, but then we have contact shadows disabled right now. So we're gonna go ahead and enable this as well and you will see a drastic change if you take a closer look at the vegetation here. So if we disable this again, you will see that the shadows underneath the plants just basically disappear. So for that small details, the, the small details that really matter in games, definitely try to have contact shadows on. Next up, let's go ahead and enable the reflection probes. So I placed just two of them. You could make it more complex by adding light probes and more reflection probes as well. But right now I'm just using two reflection probes. So if I enable them, you will see a bit of a difference, not as big, but it will become a bigger difference in just a moment. So to really help draw the point that I'm trying to make with these reflection probes, let's go to the post-processing and just enable the screen space global illumination first and foremost, and I'm gonna explain everything why. So first and foremost, the reflection probes. Basically, a reflection probe works in the way that it's like a spherical camera. So this one, for instance, it basically captures its surrounding environment and then helps all of these objects and props to reflect the light more realistically. And same thing goes for the one inside of the house. As you can see, if I disable this one, the shadows inside of the house decrease by a lot. So you can see a lot more details right now in the house, even though that's an interior scene and it's not necessarily something that should be visible with the amount of exposure that we have outside of the house. But once I enable it again, you can see the darkened shadows and the darkened walls and just the interior in general. Now with clarity around the reflection probes, why did I enable GI, Global Illumination? Basically GI, which is the acronym I, I keep using it, GI helps us determine how much each surface in the scene should be reflecting the light. So inside of this house, there probably shouldn't be a lot of light reflected from the outside, given that we just have two small windows and closed off walls. So there is not really a lot of light that should be entering this house, especially given that the light direction is not even reaching all the way to the ground where it would otherwise bounce off of these walls. So GI basically says, hey, there shouldn't be a lot of light bouncing off of these walls, so let's make it darker. So if I disable GI, you can see that ambient lighting from the scene, the bluish kind of light, is really affecting the wall very strongly where you obviously wouldn't want this so you enable GI and boom. GI also affects the plants outside so you can see if we enable it again you can see that from all the way from the bottom of a plant to the top, it's now bouncing off light in different ways where the bottom part is way darker and all the way to the top, it becomes a little bit lighter, which makes sense because the bottom part is so dense. But if I disable it, it's kind of like a flat shaded color, just the green reaching all the way to the top, which doesn't really look accurate. So GI folks, <laughs> it's, it's great, it's good. Next in line, we have ambient occlusion. In this scene, I'm not having the AO make a lot of difference because we already have a lot of shadows among the plants from contact shadows and stuff like that. So if I were to increase the intensity though, you can really see how much it affects the shadows, which, you know, if you have it this much, it's obviously not good looking. That's number one. Problem number two is if you have it that high. So just have a little bit of AO where you can darken the corners of your shapes in the scene and that should be good enough. Next, I'm also adding some micro shadows. And this is one of those that makes a big difference in the small details too. So once we enable this, you will see a ton more shadows pop up where even the smallest of plants are now getting affected by the shadows. 
In some cases, maybe it's too much for your scene, so you can actually modify the opacity. I'm actually gonna lower it a little bit too, like this. So now it looks like the bottom of these plants are actually being affected by ambient light too, whereas if we have it like this, it becomes really pitch black, which is kind of the opposite that I mentioned in Sons of the Forest, right? The shading, the darker shading is so well done. I typically also make use of indirect lighting controller. If I increase indirect diffuse lighting, you can see that the, the darker meshes really get affected by this a lot, like the tree branches and also the walls, obviously. If I have to set to one, you can see that the walls become a little too dark because I have white walls because I haven't done any material work on these walls. So I want them to be a little more reflective towards the light, right? So in my case, I'm just setting it to 1.25 and it gets a little brighter, but not too much. Now, another thing that I do, and this is very typical for me in most of the scenes that I create is I add a color adjustment layer to opposite of what people usually do where they just kind of like the contrast all the way up like this where they're like more shadows <laughs> I kind of reduce it actually below the normal value where I put it to like in this case I put it to minus 10 because if I have it at zero you will see that the shadows I mean obviously it's contrast right so the shadows become a lot darker and the highlights become a lot brighter but I want to kind of go for that like more smoothened out scene where it's not necessarily too dark in the shadowed area so having it to put to minus 10 just kind of gives this nice transition between the two shades i like it and i think that's a very important factor in using these values too where it should look good to your eyes and you should also take breaks every now and then to make sure that you understand what actually looks good to your eyes next and finally we have a shadows midtones and highlights override which i add to reduce how dark the shadows become so in a scene like this where i have a sun pretty high up, but you know, affected by the clouds. I don't really want to have shadows that are this dark, which it's not bad if you do, but I just kind of want to enable this and have it a little bit more highlighted. What this gives me is basically a bit more control over, over the shades that I have between the highlighted zone and the darkened zone. So if I open this up, you can see that I just basically increased the shadow highlights a little bit. This is by default, and then I put it somewhere like this. One final trick that I wanna show too is if we go back to the sun and we go to the intensity field, you will see that in most of my videos that I make, I don't have the intensity all the way up, which Unity gives you this light source like that by default. You will have it all the way up, which is fine. It's not a problem, but I think it just is too much. Like even if you click on this preset values that Unity have added and you say, hey, I have a high sun, you click on this and it will actually put it a little lower than the default highest value. Especially in a scene where you have the sun blocked off by clouds and some trees, you can manually play around with this value a little bit and make it a bit darker. Like this also looks pretty good actually, especially with the post grading that we just did with, you know, lightening up the shadows a little bit. So this is quite nice too. So yeah, that's a pretty fast overview, the pretty quick overview of how I typically set up scenes like these in Unity. This is mainly again, focusing on the vegetation and the lighting but let me know in the comment section if you guys would like me to recreate something else from Sunset of the Forest or maybe another game as well. All right, so there is a little bit of examples right there on how I think they could have achieved some of the results that they have in Sunset of the Forest. Again, it's a very pretty looking game. Congratulations to the team. Um, it's It's been a blast to play it as well. So it's I've been having a lot of fun with it. I hope that this video was helpful to you in terms of like reviewing the gameplay footage. It's not really something that I've done in the past. So this is a brand new format that I'm trying. Uh, but reviewing the gameplay was a lot of fun actually just playing the game and fooling around and also, you know, paying attention to the graphics, which I typically do, but I never really do it in a video format. So doing it here was actually a lot of fun. And then obviously opening up Unity and recreating some of the things, it, it was it was a blast. So I've had a lot of fun, but I hope that this video was helpful for you because that's what's important as well. So let me know in the comment section if you guys would like to see a continuation of, uh, of this brand new format on the channel, I guess. I also want to evolve into new formats of how we can best recreate things in Unity or Unreal or any other game engine. So I, I don't want to tie something specifically into one
one game engine. I just kind of want to talk about lighting and rendering and graphics as a overall topic so that you can use all of these tips and tricks that I'm sharing in the videos, but in whatever tool or software you're using. So let me know in the comment section if you like this. Uh, actually leave a like on the video too if you like this so that I know. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this one and I will see you guys in the comment section. So have a good one. Peace out.